welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now, do excuse the creaking and the whistling wind outside. We've got really quite bad weather at the moment. Now, where am I taking you back to today? Well, the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 15th of December, 1560. Controller of the household to Elizabeth I and Lord Lieutenant of Berkshire, Thomas Parry died. The Spanish ambassador claimed that Parry had died of sheer grief. He was buried at Westminster Abbey. Let me tell you a bit more about this Tudor Welshman who spent much of his life in service to Elizabeth. Thomas Parry was born in around 1515 and he was the son of Sir Henry Vaughan of Tree Tower, Brecknockshire in Wales and his wife Gwen Lyon. His grandfather, Sir Thomas Vaughan, had been executed in 1483 on the orders of King Richard III after he'd been apprehended while accompanying young King Edward V, one of the princes in the tower, from Ludlow to London. Thomas Parry's name comes from Ap Harry, which means son of Harry, his father being Henry or Harry Vaughan. Thomas anglicised it to Parry. Little is known of Parry until 1536, when he was about 21, and he entered the service of Thomas Cromwell, who employed him to carry out visitations to religious houses during the dissolution of the monasteries. One abbot in Gloucestershire even tried to bribe him. In 1539 or 1540, Parry married Anne Reed, who'd been widowed twice. Her second husband, Sir Adrian Fortescue, had been recently executed for his opposition to Henry VIII's religious policies. By 1547, Parry had entered the service of Elizabeth, daughter of Henry VIII by his second wife, Anne Boleyn. He became her cofferer in 1548 and helped Elizabeth manage and add to her assets. Parry was interrogated in 1549 following the fall of Thomas Seymour, Baron Seymour of Sudley, regarding Seymour's plans to marry the young Elizabeth and regarding Seymour's rather inappropriate behaviour with the princess while she was part of his wife Catherine Parr's household. Catherine Ashley, who'd also served Elizabeth, and John Harrington, one of Seymour's servants, were interrogated too. Parry told his interrogators that Ashley had informed him that Seymour loved Elizabeth and that Catherine Parr had been jealous of the two of them and came suddenly upon them where they were all alone, he having her in his arms, wherefore the Queen fell out both with the Lord Admiral and with her grace also. When Elizabeth found out that Parry had given information to the Crown, she is said to have called him a false wretch. Seymour was attainted on a number of counts of treason and executed in March 1549. Parry was back serving in Elizabeth's household by September 1549, so there obviously wasn't too much of a breach in his relationship with Elizabeth. In 1547, 1553 and 1555, Parry was Member of Parliament for Wallingford and then for Hertfordshire in 1559. In 1554, following Elizabeth's release from the Tower of London into house arrest at Woodstock after being implicated in Wyatt's Rebellion, Parry, as her trusted cofferer, stayed at the Bull Inn in the town rather than with the princess at the palace. By doing this, he was able to not only manage her estates and business properly, but he could also pass messages on for her as he had to receive visits from members of her household and he could keep her up to date on news in England. In 1555, when Elizabeth was released from house arrest to her estate at Hatfield, he accompanied her. And when Queen Mary I was dying in 1558, Parry was busy building up a support network for Elizabeth in readiness for her taking the throne. In November 1558, just days after Elizabeth became Queen Elizabeth I, she made Parry her controller of the household and a member of her Privy Council. He was also given a knighthood. Elizabeth also made Parry's stepson, John Fortescue, keeper of the great wardrobe. The Spanish ambassador Feria described Parry as a fat man and one who, with William Sissel, Elizabeth's principal secretary at the time, governed the kingdom. 
Parry became master of the court of wards and liveries in 1558. And in 1559, he was very active in Parliament, being recorded as sending at least 15 bills to the Lords and being a member of at least two committees. In February 1559, Parry was appointed to the committee, which was considering a petition from the Commons that the Queen should marry. It is thought that he was one of the chief advocates for the idea that Elizabeth should marry Robert Dudley. However, his colleague, William Sissel, opposed the idea, and Elizabeth did not, of course, marry Dudley. In November 1560, an ambassador recorded him being taken ill and being half ashamed of his doings for the Lord Robert. On the 15th of December 1560, Thomas Parry died of what the Spanish ambassador recorded as sheer grief. His lands were inherited by his son Thomas, who went on to serve Elizabeth as an ambassador to France, and James I as a privy councillor. Parry was buried at Westminster Abbey in the St John the Evangelist Chapel. The Latin inscription from his original brass memorial was recorded and translated in William Camden's 1600 Guide to the Abbey. It went like this. Here lies Sir Thomas Parry Knight, treasurer of the household, master of the court of wards and liveries in the reign of Queen Elizabeth, died 15th of December, 1560. When Thomas Parry departed this life, the court lost in him all that it is possible to lose by the death of one single man. Outstanding for his intellect, a gracious friend to his friends, he was a generous foster parent of truly laudable enterprises. He held the honour of the prince to be of the highest importance and he placed the wishes of the people above his own profit. And so he was knighted and became treasurer of the household. He was himself a greater treasure to that household. I look for the resurrection. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about a man who is married to a sister of Elizabeth Woodville and who was rewarded by Richard III, but was also favoured by King Henry VII. Do make sure you're subscribed by clicking round about there and that you've hit the bell to make sure you don't miss out on that. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 15th of December 1558, Cardinal Reginald Pole, Mary I, Archbishop of Canterbury, and her chief advisor, was buried at Canterbury Cathedral. Coincidentally, Cardinal Pole had died the same day as his queen on the 17th of November, 1558. Find out a bit more about Cardinal Pole, his background, death and burial in last year's video. You'll find a link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. Please do give me a like and feel free to leave a comment. I'll see you very soon. Take care.